Hey guys, this is Veronica from BehindTheKick.com and today I had the opportunity to talk to a very talented person and her name is Lana Witherspoon and she's the owner of Lana's Dough Delights and here's a conversation that we had. Lana, can you tell me what do you do? Yes, so I design custom cakes um, and cupcakes, mostly um, luxury designs. I like, um, you know, try to do original works of art. Um, whenever I can. Okay. And where are you located? I'm located in Heartland, Michigan. Michigan. So right now yep. it's uh, cool weather? It's very hot. <laughs> no, I just wore this because I look better. <laughs> Being in short sleeves. <laughs> A little bit more professional, I guess. Oh my goodness, yeah. Over here, Mister. it's super hot too. <laughs> hot it's humid so you know busy wedding season and the humidity's on that's how you know it's wedding season because it's, it's against us <laughs> <laughs> okay um I, I i would like to know what keeps you motivated or why do you keep uh decorating cakes what keeps me motivated um honestly Everything keeps me motivated. I love looking at fashion um, and other cake artists. Whatever I, you know, someone who I'm following, let's say on social media, puts out a new work of art and they show, show me their inspiration and how they created it, that gets me motivated. I start looking at things differently, uh, you know, looking at how they interpreted a dress you know, into a cake or let's say a sculpture into a cake. It, you know, it gets me excited to go and do that myself with something else. Um, you know, another, let's say couture dress, another sculpture, um, and try to see what I can create. It kind of, you know, it challenges me and I enjoy that. Um, and to be honest, nowadays, a lot of my clients, um, everybody is on Pinterest. Yeah. This is what my brides show up with. They show up with a phone. They don't show up with pictures anymore. They show up with this. And they, you know, they get on their Instagram and they get on their Pinterest and they say, I love this. And they have, you know, 10, 20, 30 pictures. And you kind of have like to take that all in and try to, you know, um, it's kind of, overwhelming because they have so much but it's kind of great because they're not saying I like this one cake make it for me they say I love all of this stuff so for me as an artist I get to take them all their ideas and create something that you know it's above and beyond what they could have imagined so it's fun I enjoy it it is because like you were saying Pinterest is like crazy but it's like too much inspiration that you can take <laughs> here and a part of over here and, and, and you can yes. it and it's and it's something yours i mean something that you it create is not like copy of uh somebody yeah. else's work That's nice. you know and i always tell people you know the best cake i can make you is the one i designed for you yes. because um i call it the replication expectation um it's a mouthful but it is really you know uh, unless it's my original work I can't replicate someone else's. I can, yes, I can technically recreate it. It's never going to look the same, exactly. you know, because everybody has their special touch. If it's my original design, I know my thought process. I know how I created it from beginning to end. I can replicate my work, but someone else's, I can get close. I can get close, you know, but it's not all, so it's always better to, you know, try to get an original design, have something custom made. Definitely. And um, do you have somebody that you admire in the cake world? Yes. <laughs> I have a lot. Of, okay, so I have a lot of people. Okay. But I guess my top two, uh, I have top two, and they're the same, and I'll tell you why. So it's Ron Ben Israel yes. and Sylvia Weinstock. And the reason why I admire them, and I kind of feel like they're the same on the same level, is because they have essentially um, taken their art, and created a cake empire, right? Um, they're very, very successful. They're very well, well known. And they have done that by staying true to themselves. Yes. Their yeah. style and their cakes um, and their art has evolved as fashion and trends have evolved. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, but when you look at Aram Ben Israel from 10 years ago versus last week, you know that's Aram Ben Israel cake. Yes. 
um, you can recognize it. And that for me, it's, uh, you know, that's very special. So I try to kind of imitate that. And we, you know, as cake artists and business people, we, I feel like sometimes we fall into the rut of just trying to get the next order. So we'll almost take just about anything uh, versus staying true to ourselves. And, you know, sometimes having to say no to somebody, you know, Ram and Ezreal will never do a naked cake. He will never do it. You'll never do it. You know why? Because the person who originally designed the uh, naked cake is a friend of his. So he said, if you want it, that's great. But he'll send you to her. He won't do it. You know, that's not what he does. Um, and I think uh, he's earned the right to say no. Um, but in staying true to himself, you know, he knows what he does and what he doesn't do. And I think that's very, you know, we have to kind of remember that as artisans as well. Yes. We don't have to do everything for everybody. I know. We need, we need to learn to say no sometimes. <laughs> so what it comes to, to my mind when you uh, gave me these two, two names is like a lot of flowers. <laughs> lots, of, lots of flowers. Yes. Yes. They do a lot of sugar flowers. And you know, I love doing sugar flowers. I enjoy them. They are sometimes, uh, they, not sometimes, all the time. They are a labor of love. And to be honest, I never, I don't think me or Ram Ben Israel charges enough for our sugar flowers. You know, know. you know, we, we don't. Um, we do it because we enjoy it. We love it. It's our art. And, uh, you know, we'll always go above and beyond. I don't, and that whole, okay, so I started this business about five years ago and I don't think I've ever charged a client enough for the sugar flowers because let's say I'll charge you up for this much, but then I'll end up putting this much on your cake. Yes. I think everybody does that. <laughs> I know because I I it's sometimes like you're doing this beautiful flower and it's like, no, 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 but I need to add this other but thing so it can look like very realistic. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it takes like forever and like, oh my goodness, if I will charge the, the uh, right amount and like, they will pay me more for the, for the flowers and for the cake. Yeah, yes. yeah. you're absolutely right. <laughs> but okay. what would you say to your 18-year-old uh, Lana? Wow, so to be honest, I would say trust your gut and follow your heart and the reason why is so at 18 years old i'm graduating high school and the next path you know was college and at the time i was graduating i graduated in 2002 so now you know how old i am but i graduated in 2002 from high school and i was going into college and going into the pastry arts um caking it wasn't the most ideal um you know job to go for it was more about go to college get a business degree get a good job you know we were in that kind of economy that um to follow an art uh wasn't realistic for the time that our economy was in so um i knew i didn't want to do business but i was good at business i know numbers so I, guess what i did I went to college. I got a business degree. I had a management job and I was really good at it. I had a really great management career. I did very well and I hated work every single day of my life. Uh, until, you know, uh, so if I could go back, honestly, and just follow that gut that said business isn't for you, um, you know, to follow that go to culinary school, go into pastry school, and really do what I enjoy doing, not, not take necessarily the safest path. Uh, but at the same time, uh, the reason why I can be successful in my business is because I have that business knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a part of me regrets it, but a part of me is appreciative for the knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, not only... I don't know how much I really learned at college, let's be honest, like going to business school. But the fact that I ran a business, I managed a business, um, 
really kind of put me in that mindset of a business owner. So when I decided to become my own entrepreneur and be in business for myself, I had that background. I had that knowledge. I knew how to manage time, money, resources. Mm-hmm. So it helped. It definitely helps because um, I think any business especially in ours, it can be um, kind of hard to put a price on sometimes non-tangible goods. You know, the service that we provide, the value that we provide that you can't necessarily, you know, make into a tangible product um, has value. And knowing how to value yourself, um, it's important. So So what would you say to a person that is starting and it's uh, having doubts about... Uh, keeping on, on, on decorating cakes? Um, you know what? It really comes down to your attitude. I would say stay motivated. Believe in yourself. Um, you know, you had told me earlier that you love my cakes, but I guarantee you that my very first cake, I should have found the picture and saved it so I can show you. It was awful. It was awful. Like, you know, people will sometimes, you know, make fun of grocery store cakes. A grocery store cake looked better than what my first cake looked like. So, but you know what? If you can power through and if you just have the desire to learn and better yourself, then you're going to do great and you're going to be fabulous and you're going to be that sought after decorator, but just believe in yourself. Um, there are a lot of hard times. There's stuff that's going to happen um, that will make you not want to do cakes anymore, mm-hmm. but it's a decision that you have to make. Is this what you want to do? And if it's yes, then power through Learn as much as you can um, from anywhere and everywhere. Don't ever think, you know, you've learned everything. Uh, And then you'll be okay. It just takes some time and it takes practice. It takes a lot of investment professionally, (laughs) um, personally, um, and even uh, monetarily. Because you know what? You have to pay for sugar, flour, butter, and eggs to practice baking. You know, and you be, you need to be consistent also, right? Yes. I mean, if you want to do it, like you have to kind of not force, but you have to do it. You can, you need, you just keep on doing it, and you're gonna get better, right? Yes, exactly. And uh, you know, you said something consistent, and I cannot emphasize enough how important that is um, in everything that you do, um, in the way, like from the beginning, the way you treat clients. Um, or in the way you roll your fondant, or in the way that you measure your baking ingredients. Um, Consistency is key. That's what's going to keep you, kind of give you that edge above everybody else. Mm -hmm. So I'll tell you what I do to be consistent. One, I treat everyone the same. I don't care if you're ordering a cake for $100 or a cake for $3,000. You're going to get me and my attention and really I'm going to go above and beyond for you Um, because it doesn't matter how small that cake is. To the person getting it, that celebration is important. Mm -hmm. That's why they came to me to get a cake because that's important to them. So treat everyone the same. My fondant, my best trick for people is, you know, those thickness guides. That way, if you're fondant is rolled to the same thickness it drapes beautifully when you bake if you have like i bake by weight Mm -hmm. so i know every cake i make is exact same that consistency really um helps you in even in your costs if you know the recipe is going to cost you the same every single time that saves you money it saves you a lot of money a lot of less waste so yes consistency Yes, it is very important. I mean, not even not not only in cakes, but in everything, because it's uh, if you don't you don't do it, it's like you have to make it a habit, because yes. that's gonna speak for yourself. Yeah, and oh, people are gonna get to know you for that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. No. And the other thing is, you know, if you're consistent, and you said you know you have to make it a habit, and it's absolutely right because if you make it a habit, and then you're ready to get to a point where you're ready to grow. You can train those habits because now this is a method. This is a formula. Um, and it's easier to teach someone 
to, let's say, in how you bake um, or whatever you hire them for to grow your business. You know, Ram Ben Israel does not create every single cake. He teaches, he has a formula on how each sugar flour should look like, how it's cut, how it's rolled, how it's prepared. And then he can teach an army of people that same method. And you don't know, you know, which one of his artists created the cake. You just know that that's a Ram Ben Israel cake, right? Yes, correct. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what the, do you have like a special quote, like for encouragement? Um, quote, no, but um, I have a word, okay. <laughs> um, and the, my favorite word is attitude because, um, the reason why is because it doesn't matter the situation that you're in or what it is that you're dealing with, your attitude towards it um, really defines the outcome. So um, I think just have the right attitude and the right attitude is a positive attitude. Don't ever think you can't accomplish something. Um, don't ever um, prejudge a client. So a request comes in um, and you can have the attitude of, oh, this is not gonna be worth my time. Or your attitude can be, I can't wait to meet this person. And guess what? When your attitude is, I can't wait to meet this person, see what I can do for them, you can often get that, you know, the big kahuna of an order versus when you're like, oh, I don't think this person's going to want my cake. You know, it's your attitude towards definitely your business, towards people, mm -hmm. towards your craft um, will really define your success. Yeah, you need to be open to everybody. Like, uh... mm -hmm. Like you were saying, not prejudge because we don't know. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing. Like, there are some cakes that I don't like to do. And to be honest, um, so I have a daughter, so I love doing cakes for girls. I don't like doing cakes for boys. I don't have any boys. So they're not my favorite, right? Um, but I take them and I'll do them and I look at it as, you know, just adding to my skill set. But then, you know, guess what happens? That brother probably has a sister, and she needs a birthday cake, too. Yes. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, kind of, like, be open to it. We may not enjoy everything, but even if you're not enjoying doing a, let's say, a boy's or a girl's birthday cake, um, look at it as a way to practice your skills. Yes, and it's somebody's baby, also. It's somebody's right. baby. <laughs> I know. So, um... What do you want your legacy to be? Oh my jeez. I don't know. That wasn't the question I wanted to answer. I had oh, no idea. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm I can't sorry. believe it. That's okay. I don't because I don't know. <laughs> I oh, that's some, some, out, yeah. Something new to think about. <laughs> yeah, I saw that question. I'm like, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> It's a difficult question because if, if they, somebody asks me, it's like, oh my goodness, I will say for my kids to to learn from me that you need to do things with passion and you need to do what you love so you can be happy because if you don't, I mean, yeah. you're not going to be happy. Yeah, I, I don't know. I uh, To be honest with everybody, I guess. I don't know what I want my legacy to be, but I guess if I have to be remembered for something, I just want to be remembered for being a good, kind person. Yeah. Um, okay. I, oh, God. My husband, I told him I'm going to be recording. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't ever want to be remembered, you know, like if I look at my daughter, I don't want her to remember me as, oh, mommy did cakes. You know, I want her to remember like, oh, you know, mommy loved me. Mommy did, you know, spend time with me. Like that is more important. Yes. Cakes, I enjoy cakes, but that's mine. That should not be what defines me as a person. Mm -hmm. um, but legacy, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. Maybe in another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this one is... Uh... What has been the happiest moment in your life or your dream, your cake life? <laughs> oh, in my cake life, to be honest, every time I create that one design that I design, it's the happiest moment of my life. You do that awesome cake and you set it up at a venue and then you, you know, 
the bride um, a couple of weeks ago literally texted me as she's eating dinner telling me how amazing her cake is and then just like i've never had a bride stop in the middle of her wedding while she's eating dinner to tell me you know you did an awesome job thank you so i mean that's, that's awesome. those moments you know really uh redefine and like make my you know decision to follow my passion a little bit more uh you know concrete and i you know that i've made the right decision you know and what would you like to learn the next three months next three months so my plan is after october that's when business dies down um i really want to focus on my gravity defying and sculpted cakes and like a flying dragon or like a pony like the standing up you know what i mean um that's definitely what i want to do and i'm taking time in like december and january when business is a little bit slow and i want to just you know knock out some projects maybe make a dinosaur i don't know <laughs> what do you say to yourself every day like when you wake up what is the first thing that you say to yourself Good morning, world. Um, you know what? It depends. On my days off, I just, I'm excited it's a day off. And I'm like, it's, you know, it's the first word that kind of gets in my head is family. So my days off are family. That's the first, my first focus. And, um, you know, the days that I have to work, like my first word is production. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's my main focus. I know... Uh, kind of like how I start my day and what I'm focused on. Uh, if I have that set first thing in the morning, it makes my day a lot easier. So, you know, the day off, it's my family. You know what? I don't answer phone calls. I do not return emails. I am playing with my daughter. I'm spending time with my husband. Um, we're doing family. And that is important because um, a lot of cake artists, um, especially beginners, that you, you have to be in the business 110%. And if you do that, you're going to burn yourself out and you're going to lose out on very important times um, in your life. And it's not worth it. There's no business on this planet that is worth it. Yeah. So learn to take a day off, focus on your family, focus on yourself. And work days are work days. You know what? I wake up in the morning and get my daughter to school. Afterwards, I'm working until I know it's going to be her time to come back. And that's the end of my work day. So, you know, eight to four, I'm at work and I focus on work and that's where I am 110%. Um, but after that, the day, the day is over. Um, so, so you treat it as a day job, right? I have, yeah, so I, exactly, I treat it like a day job. So, you know, when she's, a, my work hours are basically her school hours. Mm -hmm. So she's gone, I work. She's home, like my day is over. You know, you keep if you you have to set hours for your business. You cannot be available 24-7. Um, and it's but we kind of fall into the rut because now everybody texts. You know what? If somebody texts me and it's after work hours, they go get an answer tomorrow. Yes. Do not answer it. Do not answer it. Do not be that person. Yes. Um, it's just really doing a disservice to you um, and to really to your clients as well. You don't want to, you know, make the expectation that you're going to answer every call um, right away. And then when you don't, they take it the wrong way. But if they know like, okay, I'm texting her at six, seven o'clock and that's not her normal business hours, they know they're not going to get a response the next day. Just the way it is. And it's important also uh, to keep those, uh, like to keep that schedule because you need time for yourself, not only for your family, but it's sometimes we neglect ourselves. Yes. Like, yes. Oh, I haven't uh, done my hair or I haven't uh, done my exercise, whatever it is, and, and that burns you up. Yes, you have to take care of yourself. Your mental and physical health is very important to the success of your business. So as silly as it sounds, you know, yeah, we work from home, right? So... I, you, you don't necessarily have to get dressed every morning. Let's just face it. You can be in your pajamas and you can bake. You can certainly do that. But if you kind of like get up, I fall, I fell into that rut and I had to get myself out of it because I wasn't feeling good about myself anymore. Um, you get up in the morning, take a shower, you do your hair, you put on clothes, jeans and a t-shirt, fine, but you're not in your pajamas. You're not in sweats, right? Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, even 
I don't necessarily wear a lot of makeup, but even like a little bit of mascara, I feel like I'm ready to answer the door. Yeah. That makes you feel good about yourself. So then you're doing everything with an increased self-esteem. And that translates in your work. You feel better about your work, about what you're putting out, um, you know, and you're kind of like in that happy space all day long. Uh, but yes, to that point, that's why the business hours, if you know you're not going to start till eight, wake up a little bit early, take care of yourself, have your coffee. And if you can, peace and quiet. I know with children, it doesn't happen, but at least get a cup of coffee in, tea, whatever it is that you'd like to drink um, and set yourself up. I mean, it's setting up yourself for success. Yeah, that's so so important to get ready. It's like like you you're working out of your house. Cause that's I mean everybody does that or pretty much everybody does that. And in, it, that shower in the morning like it wakes you up and makes you ready. And like you were saying, if you're wearing some mascara or lipstick, that's like like this part is already taken care of. Let me start doing yeah. my business. It works you up. It just it sets you up. You just feel better. You feel good, right? <laughs> If you could be a superhero, who will you be? Uh, maybe like Superwoman. Because, and the only reason why is I would be any superhero with like super strength to pick up the heavy cakes. That's all I want. Because <laughs> they get heavy. <laughs> so I want super strength. Probably <laughs> superhero possible. Okay. Um, do you believe in Bigfoot? Um, I don't necessarily believe in Bigfoot. Bigfoot, but I do believe that we haven't discovered everything there is to discover about our world. <laughs> what do you prefer, vanilla uh, or chocolate? Vanilla. Fondant or buttercream? Uh, fondant. Absolutely fondant. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? My favorite what? Color. Color? Gold. I can see. <laughs> can you see? <laughs> I'm available. I have a website, lotusdotalice.com. I'm also available on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. Okay. Um, so you can follow me on any of those. And my links are on my website. Okay. Uh, you can also find me on The Knot and Wedding Wire. I'm basically everywhere. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, this interview. And we'll see you around. Yes, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and be sure to subscribe. Also join our group Behind the Cake in Facebook. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Do I have to do anything or? No. You okay, good. No, just <laughs> talk. I don't know. <laughs>